Hello, my name is Joost Timpers from the Netherlands, that country that's famous for agriculture and milk products. In 2004, I came to Kenya and I started my own yogurt company called Lucky Lucky. It's actually one of the best yogurts in the market. You should try it. But first, I will tell you my story. In uh, 2004, that was the first time that I came in Kenya. And at that time I was uh, doing voluntary work for uh, projects in, uh, in Kenya. And I found out that uh, with my skills and knowledge I can really add value. Uh, and at that time uh, I started a foundation calling, uh, uh, called the Foundation of African Friends. Uh, and with that uh, foundation I tried to help uh, uh, entrepreneurs in Kenya with uh, microcredits and things like that. Uh, in 2012, I really started Lucky Lucky. I started my own business in uh, Kenya. Uh, but for the social good, um, the, the milk I bought from a children's home, uh, I bought it for a premium price and um, I turned it into yogurt and sold it to safari lodges uh, in the Masamara, for example. Uh, at that time, we were just a small project. Um, and that went on for a couple of years. I was not living in Kenya at that time. And uh, there came a point in 2017 Then I thought, okay, are we just keeping this as a project with small impact or do we really want to make a big impact and grow the company? I believe in uh, being a social entrepreneur and that means companies do not exist to make money, but companies exist because they want to make an impact on the society, either to uh, make healthy food or to create employment or to generate income for farmers here in Kenya. So I believe the main reason for companies and their objective is to have a social impact. And of course they need to make money to make impact. And that's actually the, uh, the reason that I started Lucky Lucky, to really have a social impact. The main benefit uh, of being a social entrepreneur is that uh, customers and employees are really connected to the business. So they are really willing to work for us or to buy our products. And that's, I think, the main benefit when they see that, for example, the kids are on the, um, on the packaging, that they see, okay, with buying Lucky Lucky, I'm really contributing to uh, these orphans, the less fortunate kids in Kenya. And uh, that's, I believe, the, the main benefit of being a social entrepreneur and explaining to everybody that it's not about making money, it's about having a social impact. I think this product uh, explains everything about how we differentiate ourselves at Lucky Lucky. The, the dairy market and the yogurt market, especially in Kenya, is a bit saturated. Uh, there are a lot of big players. And uh, funny enough, somebody told me uh, some time ago, he said, you found a niche market where nobody knew there was a niche market. And with this product, which has um, low sugar and high protein, uh, which has a lot of nutritional value, we can really differentiate us from other dairy brands. And uh, customers are really appreciating uh, these nutritional values, values, and that's why they're buying it from us. You can see it's a glass reusable packaging, so we try to uh, minimize our impact on the planet. This uh, glass comes back to the factory, we clean it properly and we can refill it. That's great, we don't need plastic for that. Uh, unfortunately, we still have plastic packaging, but we try to get rid of it. Then secondly, you can see that it's transparent packaging. I don't think any other brand, dairy brand, has transparent packaging. We don't want to hide anything from our customers. The customers can see what they get, and if they don't like the product, they can choose another product, but at least they can see what they are buying. So I think that's also one thing that's very important for us, that we want to be honest to our customers. Then thirdly, um, you can see the product. And uh, of course, it's very attractive to see the product when it's uh, fresh fruit. So the fruit sauce is uh, one of our most important things and we want it to uh, be shown. And here in the glass, you can see it excellent. That uh, you can see, for example, the raspberries. Uh, this fruit pulp, is fresh from Kenya and that's really unique in the dairy uh, market. I found out that most dairy brands in Kenya are importing actually their fruit pulp 
And I also did in the beginning. Uh, so uh, we bought fruit pulp from Europe, from Egypt, from South Africa, and all the other dairy brands in Kenya are doing that. And what you can see here in Kenya, you have so much good fruits. Uh, the only thing is how to prepare the fruits well so you can uh, use them in the, in the yogurt. Uh, so I had to find somebody who uh, was actually able to uh, require the spe specifications that I needed to uh, put the, uh, the fruit in my Greek yogurt. We cannot put fresh fruits in our yogurt. I mean, you can do that at home when you have your natural yogurt and then you can put fresh fruits. But for us, we have to prepare it uh, to make it uh, a bit sweeter and also to uh, have it uh, a longer shelf life. Um, and therefore, I was looking for a processor, somebody who I could trust and who could source the fruits for me. Um, and I wanted only the best quality fruits to be sourced for my yogurt. Uh, and with uh, Davis, I found uh, the right guy with the uh, food technology knowledge to help me out with this challenge to have uh, real fresh fruits added to my yogurt. My name is Davis Munene Nyamwe. I'm the managing director of VG Foods uh, Limited. At VG Foods, we grow fruits and manufacture them into fruit preps that are customized specifically for the dairy industry and the pastry industry. So we met just uh, in 2019 when we were trying to sell the idea of uh, fruit pulp uh, to be used in their real fruit uh, yogurts. And at that time, they were importing their, their pulp, so I needed them to flip into the Kenyan based product. So we had our formulations ready for their use and we thought they would be a very good fit for us as a small business so that we can integrate operations together as we grow together. My network with uh, David helped us really to, um, to link with uh, farmers up country uh, where I was not aware of and uh, he had a network with these farmers and he could source the right fruits for me from these farmers. Um, previously, we were buying the fruit uh, pulp directly from a processor in Europe or in South Africa. And um, there's a big difference in uh, the fresh fruits that I buy from uh, Kenya here and the fruit pulp that is bought from abroad. Uh, when you look at the sugar content, when you look at the fruit content, we've really made a big difference. We try to be as low in sugar as possible. And because the fruits in Kenya have so uh, much sweetness from itself, we de don't need to add a lot of sugar. And that really made a big uh, difference compared to the old fruit pulp we bought from abroad. I did some market research and what I found on the market is many dairy products have actual colors and flavors in their uh, yogurt. I didn't want to go that way. I wanted to use real fresh fruits from Kenya. So imagine uh, a flavor like this. This is a mango flavor that is um, added into yogurts into, uh, in Kenya. I wanted to use this, a fresh mango, into my yogurt. And um, as a consumer, what do you want? Do you want to have this in your body or do you want to have this in your body? When it comes to quality, milk of course is a very important thing for us and therefore we are cooperating with farmers that are in the neighborhood of our factory so that we have fresh milk from our farmers. Actually we're now here at one farm and the factory is very close so it would be interesting to see how fast the milk can go from the cow into the factory. Uh, that can be done within uh, 20 minutes I think. And uh, that means the quality of the milk is very good because if you transport the milk for a long time, the milk tends to become bad. Bacteria growth will uh, expand. And uh, that's why we try to work with farmers around the factory so that we have fresh milk and the quality of the milk is best for us. Also remember, the reason why we started Lucky Lucky was to have an impact on the Kenyan community. So I believe that we have uh, impact in three ways. One, we're making a healthy product, low sugar, high in protein, so that people can really benefit from a healthy lifestyle and eat our yogurt. Secondly, we are creating jobs here, here at the factory, here at the farm, and also up country where we uh, buy the fruits from the farmers, we can uh, create uh, employment and have economic development there. And then thirdly, part of our profit we give back to the children's home in uh, Thika, 
so we are able to um, to pay school fees for 20 children and sustain a children's home where you have primary school kids uh, around 54, 54 children. But Jane can tell us better about that. My name is Jane Wanjiro. I'm a director at Ruru Children Care Center. We have 54 kids. We support we they are orphans and vulnerable kids. That's the children that we support there in our home. I knew you through coming to our home. But back there we had some cows. We used to sell. We used to come and buy milk for us. We sell him the milk. Then he realized our expenses in our children's home. That's why he started supporting us. And we the the milk she, he was buying in our children's home. It was the one who was preparing raki raki yogurt with. Through that relationship. It has been good because we have we have been able to sponsor many students, and a lot of students has been able to join university through Lucky Lucky and also colleges, just through him. So it has been a good relationship to us, and also we have small kids; they are still there, and they have a promising future ahead of them. Coming from the Netherlands, uh, of course, I had to learn about the Kenyan systems. Of course, first I had to get my work permit, get all the licenses from the government institutions. And um, it was not always that transparent, so I really had to uh, engage with the different government institutions to really understand um, what they are uh, requiring from me. Um, I think um, more, um, how do you say, uh, education from the government institutions uh, could be helpful. What I was a bit uh, shocked about when I came from the Netherlands is when you look at the credit terms that are normal here in Kenya. Um, in the hotel industry there are high credit terms and also in the retail industry you can expect uh, credit terms like 45 to 60 days. So that means as an entrepreneur I really had to pre-finance for a long time. So those kind of things uh, are quite challenging when you're starting a new business. As much, as much as this is a unique product in the market, it has not been very easy to establish the business. We had many challenges and I had many sleepless nights. Um, one of the things of course is that we have um, a double digit growth plan. So every month we want to grow at least 10%. And then at the same time to maintain the quality of the product is so difficult because we are growing, we have more products, we have more customers, more retail outlets that we have to uh, deliver and then we want to have the same product everywhere. Um, we need a cold chain that's working 100% because if the cold chain is not working the yogurt gets spoiled. These kind of things are uh, definitely not easy to, uh, to implement and to continuously have it in place. Uh, and of course that's, uh, yeah, I'm cool now here and uh, easy and nice to say these kind of things and I'm proud about my products, but this, is, uh, this is, uh, was not a walk in the park. My vision for Lucky Lucky is that every Kenyan can buy a Lucky Lucky for himself. That it will be available in the whole country and that everybody can enjoy the healthiness and the taste of a Greek yogurt together with Kenyan fruits. This was my story about Lucky Lucky. We promise our customers that we are twice as good if they buy Lucky Lucky. But I'm also interested in your story about your agricultural venture. Share your story too.